Welcome to chapter four. Chapter four, we are doing integration. Okay, section one, we're doing something called the antiderivative. And another way to say this is indefinite integration or the indefinite integral. All right, these two basically mean the same thing. Well, they do mean the same thing. Not basically. They do mean the same thing. All right. So what does it mean to be an antiderivative? Well, let's talk about a derivative first. So if I have a function like 3x squared plus 5, what is the derivative of this function? We say it's 6x. Antiderivative means we go back. The problem is, what if we don't know what the original one is? And I just know that it's the derivative is 6x. So that means I can go back and say, oh, I know that comes from 3x squared but I don't know what the original thing that was being added to it is, okay? So that is the one weird part of integration or antiderivative. You know how to do one part where the variable is, but you're always gonna be missing that constant, okay? So in that case, where we will be looking at, we're just gonna be add a number to acknowledge the fact that we don't know what the missing number is, okay? All right, let's talk about this one. All right, so here, this is page 214 of the Incredibles book. This is page 214 in the Credo's book. So when we take the derivative of any of these functions, right, x squared plus 4, the derivative is 2x. x squared minus x, derivative of 2x, yada, yada, yada. But when we integrate, it could be any one of these four, all right? So to acknowledge that fact, I'm saying it again. I just said it a few seconds ago. When we integrate it, when we find the antiderivative, we're going to say it's x squared plus a constant. All right. So let's look at this thing here. Oh, the definition, blah, blah, blah. Well, you basically, we just did that. The set of all anti set of all antiderivatives of a function f of x is the indefinite integral of f of x with respect to x and denoted by this notation, where uh, integral of f of x, so the integral of f with respect to x, okay? The, the, with respect to x is this part here, the dx, not the f of x there. So this could be the integral of f of x with respect to x. Okay. All right. The language of the indefinite integral. So this is the common statement, right? So like I might give you this part, the left side, as the problem, and you give me the right side as the answer. All right. So this, this little stretched out s is the integral sign. This part right here is the integrand. So in this example, f of x is the integrand x right here, the dx, that's the variable integration. c here is called the constant of integration. And the big F, capital F of x, that's the integral or the antiderivative. All right, so that's how you read that. That's how you understand that statement. All right, now we're going to do some basic integration rules. I'm going ahead and jump in on to page 215. This is page 215. Here we go. We have basic integration rules. All right, so what I'm giving you is the left side, right? I'm giving you the left side, right? I'm giving you this side of that statement, and I'm going to fill in the right side. So we're filling in the right side. So that's integral of 0 dx, and the integral of that is some constant. So some constant I don't know about, right? So remember, so if I had a function like y equals 7, what's the derivative of that? What's y prime? Well, it's 0. That's where that's coming from. So I have zero and I have some constant that I don't know. So I put C, I don't know that it's seven. It's whatever it is. So C represents some number and it doesn't have to be a whole number. It's just any number, okay? Come over here. What is the integral? If I'm given some number, the integral would be KX plus a constant, okay? So what does that mean? So, so K could be, a, so it could be a number like this, say three DX, okay? Then the integral will be, Oops, I almost wrote K. 3x plus C, right? Think about it. So if I have Y equals 3X plus 7, the derivative of that will be Y prime equals 3, right? 7 goes away. The derivative of 3X is 3. So here, this is, remember, this plus C is acknowledging that I don't know what this constant is, okay? But this part, I should be able to identify, 3X. All right. So K of F X is simply K times the integral of f of x plus a constant, right? So basically it's saying just integrate f and k comes for the right. 
okay, x to the n. So this is the first one that's actually a real rule. So this is a rule you're supposed to know. Okay, when I take the antiderivative, or when I integrate this, it's x, you add one to the exponent, and you divide by the new exponent. You add one to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. Quick example, if I have integral of x to the four, then the integral is x to the five, add one to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. Okay, uh, frequently I would be writing it this way, Okay, all right, but that's it. So you add one to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. That's it. Uh, here, what is the integral when you have two functions and you add them together? Well, you find the antiderivatives and you add them together, plus a constant. So basically, this is saying if you have to add two functions, when you integrate them, you're still adding them when you integrate them. That's it. Same with this one, f of x minus g of x. Plus C. Okay, nothing special there. And I'll do an example of that in a moment. So remember, you're doing this backwards. So the integral of cosine is sine. So this is where you're not going to do the opposite SIGN, but you're going to do the opposite SIGN when you come over here. So that's going to be negative cosine x plus C. All right, so what's a derivative of sine? Cosine. What's a derivative of negative cosine? positive sign, okay? Secant square is the derivative of what function? It's the derivative of tangent x. What's cosecant square the derivative of? Of negative cotangent x. What is secant x tangent x the derivative of? It's a derivative of secant x. What is cosecant x cotangent x the derivative of? It's a derivative of negative cosecant x. All right? What's e to the x the derivative of? e to the x. And here, this is the weird one. A lot of you don't know the derivative of a to the x. You remember the derivative, if I have a function y equals a to the x, or let's write this, y equals 7 to the x, the derivative is 7 to the x times the natural log of 7. So here, the derivative is a to the x times the natural log of a. When I integrate it, instead of multiplying by the natural log of the base, we're going to divide by it. So here, a to the x, that's going to be a to the x divided by the natural log of a, plus a constant. What is the integral of 1 over x? It is the natural log of the absolute value of x. Okay, remember the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. All right, so what is this? What is the integral of this? So this has an exponent of 1, right? It's x to the 1, so I'm using this power rule. I'm using this power. I'm going to add 1 to the exponent and divide by the exponent. So that's going to be 5x squared over 2 plus a constant. Okay, and it's probably better written as 5 halves x squared plus c. Okay, all right. So here, this one is actually like this one. We're using the power rule and the constant rule. Okay, so here, I'm going to add 1 to the exponent and divide by the exponent. So it's x to the fifth over 5. I wrote, I said 5, I wrote 4. Dang it, all right. So that's a 5. It's not a 4 minus 6x, right? Remember the integral of k is kx. So k in this example is 6, 6x plus c, right? I am subtracting two functions, so I when I integrate them, I still have that subtraction. There you go, plus c. Here, you want to take this and rewrite it as an exponent. So I'm going to rewrite it as 3 fourths. Remember, uh, if you have a root, that root is a denominator of a fractional exponent. Now, I still use the same rules, same rules. I add one to the exponent, so that's 7 fourths, divided by the new exponent. That is really ugly. You should not leave it like that. So that's 4 sevenths x to the 7 fourths plus c. All right? And I'm not referring to my handwriting when I say ugly. Second squared. Yes, I make myself laugh. Anyway, so second squared is derivative. It was derivative tangent. The 5, so it's basically like this one. So k is the 5, and second squared is the f of x. So capital F of x will be tangent, and 5 is just coming for the right. So we're going to say 5 times tangent of x plus the constant. All right. Here, uh, I'm going to rewrite this as 3 halves times 1 over x dx. All right. So 3 halves. So I'm separating it so uh, you can see the 1 over x. All right. So 
that becomes 3 halves natural log of the absolute value of x plus a constant. And here, that's essentially 1, right? If you remember, if you don't see a number, there's probably a 1 or a 0. Here, the case is 1. And k is 1, so it's like this one here. So k is 1. So this just becomes x, or 1x plus c. All right, I'm going to go ahead and go on to page 216. I know the video is getting long, but this is just going through examples. You don't need to see every example if you understand what's going on. So in fact, go ahead and do this one. All right, I'm going to pause a bit, give you a chance to pause the video. But here's the answer, 7x plus c. All right, you're going to go to that. All right, 4x, you add 1 to the x one, divide by the x one. So it's 4x squared over 2 plus 6x. Clean that up. 2x. Oops, I forgot something. What did I forget? I forgot the constant of integration. I forgot the plus c. All right. Next one. This has an extra parentheses. So we're going to go 1 fourth x to the fourth minus x squared plus 3x plus the constant. So I skipped some steps here, right? I added 1. Got 4, divide by. Remember, divide is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. I added 1. Remember, there's an invisible 1 here. 1 plus 1 makes 2. And I divide by 2. So I divide that 2 by 2. In other words, it canceled. There's a regular constant here. And when I integrate a constant, I get 3x. That's it. Here, this is a tricky question. People think, oh, there's a function e to the x. But there's no x on this, e, so e is just a constant. So this is e times x plus c. All right, so that was a trick. And yes, AP has known to pull that trick, right? While this one is just negative 4e to the x plus c. Remember, the deriv derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So there's nothing special there. Here, we do not have a quotient rule for integration. So first, we're going to do is rewrite this. So I'm going to rewrite this. So since the denominator is a monomial, I can write it separately. Okay, so all I did was rewrite x over 2x squared minus 4 over x, oops, 2x squared, not just x squared. All right, let's rewrite it again. So all I'm doing so far is just algebra. That reduces to 1 over 2x, and that reduces to 2 over x squared. And I'm going to do a little more algebra. So 1 over 2x, the same as 1 half times 1 over x, and that one is the same as minus 2x to the negative 2. Okay, now I'm ready to integrate. So this is going to get in the way here. So it's one half natural log of the absolute value of x minus two times x to the, remember you adding one to the exponent, so that's negative one, divide by the new exponent plus a constant. So that's negative one in the denominator. I know, I apologize for my handwriting. So that becomes one half natural log absolute value of x. I'm going to clean this up so it's negative, negative. So it's plus two x to the negative 1 goes in the denominator as over x plus a constant. So that's a simplified version of my answer. Okay, continuing to m. I'm going to rewrite this as sine x over cosine x times 1 over cosine x dx. So what I've basically done is separate cosine squared into cosine times cosine. Okay, and you might be thinking, well, how am I supposed to do that? Well, uh, what I saw here was, oh, it almost looks like tangent, except for that cosine has an exponent while a sine doesn't. So I split it up so I can get tangent out of it. Now I'm going to rewrite it. That's tangent x. And if you recall, co 1 over cosine x is secant x. Now, do you remember that that's the derivative of something? Yeah, that's a derivative of secant. So the integral is secant x plus constant. All right. Here. I'm going to run out of space, so I'm going to put this somewhere else. So this was n 4 over e to the negative x dx. Double checking. Yes, that's what it was. All right. That's, that's just a problem. All right. So this, do some algebra. You can rewrite it as it's 4. If it's a negative exponent down there, it's a positive exponent over here. So that was just a weird trick. Okay. So then the integral is just 4 e to the x plus c. All right. Remember the integral or the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The integral is just e to the x. So that's n. So I'll go ahead and put the answer here for e to the x plus c. And here, d, or o rather. Uh, first, I'm going to do some algebra. 5 over 
x to the 2 thirds dx. So now that I have written as an exponent, I can rewrite it as 5x to the negative 2 thirds dx. Right? All I did was rewrite it without a fraction. That means I changed the exponent to a negative exponent. Now I use the rule, the power rule. So I add 1 to that. So it's 5x. So it's negative 2 thirds plus 1 will be 1 third. Divide by the new exponent. So it's divide by 1 third plus c. So dividing by 1 third is the same as multiplying by 3. So that's 15x to the 1 third plus c. So this is a good form. You don't really need to go beyond that. However, the textbook might. So I can rewrite that as cube root of x plus c. Okay. So looking at this, p, looking at example p, uh, you might be thinking there's a product rule. There is no product rule, at least not we're going to study, uh, for integration. And it's not called a product rule, by the way. So what I'm going to do is multiply that out. So that's x squared minus 4. So this is, turns out to be straightforward. You add 1 to the exponent and divide by the exponent. So that becomes x cubed over 3 minus 4x plus the constant. All right. Now, 4 to the x. So it's 4 to the x divided by the natural log of 4 plus c. That's an x, not a 4. All right. Can't really clean that up here. Again, I'm going to rewrite them. So whenever you have something over a monomial, if you have a polynomial over a monomial, go ahead and rewrite it as separate fractions. So this is x squared over x plus 1 over x dx. And by the way, if you skip this step and go straight to this, that is perfectly okay. All right, now to integrate this, that's going to be x squared over 2 plus the natural log of absolute value of x plus c. And is there a 217 I want to do? No, I don't think so. All right, and that's it. That's in the video. Bye-bye.